Look at West Virginia on your phone map right now. Zoom in on the tight valleys and the long ridges. You will see towns lined up like beads on a string. You will see roads pinned to creek bottoms. You will see old tipples, quiet sidings, and dark mine portals cut into hillsides. You can also see something else if you know what to look for. The coal seams sit in layers like pages in a book. When a road cut shows a black band, that band is not just fuel. It is a snapshot of an ancient swamp forest. That is the mystery people feel, but never get a clean answer for. How can a black rock that powered a modern nation also carry clear prints of a world that died long before people existed? And why did those seams end up right under certain towns while other places never had a chance? Here is the promise. We know exactly how those seams formed. We know why West Virginia got so many thick seams. We know why miners sometimes find roots, bark prints, and stump shapes right in the coal roof and floor. And we know why this region's rise and fall was never just about choices. It was about where the land placed a rare kind of plant storage layer, then locked it in stone. That is not weakness. That is a hard rule of the ground. Let's hit quick reveals right up front to show the pattern. One, West Virginia coal comes from swamp plants that piled up into peat, not from random mud. Two, many seams formed around 300 million years back before dinosaurs existed, when the air was hotter and the land was flat and wet. Three, some seams get up to about six feet thick, which is like stacking two grown men head to head. This is roughly the height of a standard doorframe. Four, you can find fossil plant prints in roof shale and in the rock under the coal because leaves and stems got buried fast. Five, the seat earth under some seams has old root marks so you can tell a forest stood right there. Six, the hills you see today did not create the coal. They exposed it later by slowly wearing down and cutting into layers. The rock proves all of this in the same places again and again. Start with what you can see today. In coal country, streams run in narrow cuts. Road crews blast through layers and you see a striped wall, gray shale, tan sandstone, then a black band. Above it, more gray. Below it, more gray. That black band is coal. It is not a random blob. It is a thin, flat sheet that can run for miles. That sheet shape tells you it formed in a wide, flat area, not a steep mountain slope. It had to be a low, swamp plain where water covered the ground and air could not get in easy. That low oxygen is a big deal. It slows rot. It lets plant matter pile up instead of breaking down. Picture the plants, because it helps it feel real. The swamp forests were full of giant ferns, tall club moss trees, and other seedless plants. Some had trunks like poles. Some had bark patterns like stacked diamonds. When they fell, they landed in wet muck. The muck was like a cold storage box for plant parts. With little oxygen, the plants did not fully rot. They turned into peat. Peat is like a thick, wet sponge of plant fibers. Over time, more layers pressed down. Pressure squeezed water out. Heat slowly changed the plant fibers into coal. People often think coal needs fire to form. It does not. It needs burial and pressure. The heat comes from being buried deep, not from burning. If you bury peat under hundreds or thousands of feet of rock, it will compact, it will lose water and gases, it will become denser and richer in carbon. That is how you get bituminous coal, the kind common in West Virginia. That is also why coal is layered. It formed as repeated swamp episodes, not as one single event. Now, here comes the first big reveal that changed how people pictured it. Scientists couldn't explain this for a long time, so some folks imagined coal as driftwood piles that floated in and sank like a big log jam. That idea could explain small local pockets, 
but it fails in West Virginia because seams are wide and flat and repeat in stacks. Then geologists looked closer at the rock under the coal. They found root traces in the clay and silt under many seams. They found underclay that looks like an old soil. They found root tunnels and root marks going down. That is proof the plants grew right there. The swamp forest stood in place. It was not a raft, it was a rooted landscape. You can still see that proof today. In some mine roofs, you can spot leaf prints in the shale above the seam. In some floor rock, you can see root marks and stump bases. Miners have long told stories about finding stump shapes and root balls in the rock around seams. Sometimes the wood itself is gone, but the shape stays as an imprint or as a mineral-filled mold. That happens because minerals carried by water can fill empty space after the plant matter decays. The plant becomes a void. The void becomes a cast. That is how a stump can show up even when the wood is no longer wood. Let's put numbers in context so they mean something. A six-foot seam is not just thick. It is a sign of a long, stable swamp. To build that much peat, the swamp had to stay wet for a long time. It also had to avoid too much sand washing in. Sand would dilute the peat and ruin the coal layer. So the land had to be flat and calm. Rivers had to shift slowly. The water table had to stay high. Those are strict conditions. That is why thick seams are not everywhere. They form where the land gives the right setup. Now we need more evidence and it explains why seams repeat like stacked pancakes. The swamp did not stay the same forever. Sea level rose and fell. Rivers moved. Sometimes the swamp got flooded by mud and sand. That buried the peat fast. Fast burial matters because it seals the peat away from oxygen and from scavengers. Then, after a while, the area could turn swampy again and build a new peat layer on top of the older rock. That cycle repeated many times. So you get coal, then shale, then sandstone, then coal again. It is like the land kept flipping between forest swamp mode and river mud mode. This is where present day geography comes back in. West Virginia's hills are steep now, but that is not how it was when the peat formed. The land later got pushed and folded. Then rivers cut down and carved valleys. Over a long time, the hills rose into what you see today, and the layers got tilted and exposed. That is why coal shows up in road cuts and creek banks now. The seams were laid down flat. Then the whole stack got lifted and worn down until the pages were exposed at the surface. Now let's add the dominance ranking because it helps you feel grounded. The Appalachian Mountains are older than the Rockies. The early building of the Eastern Range began about 480 million years back, before dinosaurs existed, before trees, before fish walked on land, when oceans covered big parts of the East. Much of the Rocky Mountain rise happened far later, around 80 to 40 million years back. That is roughly six times older in simple age terms, the evidence is clear in dated minerals and rock layers. These mountains have survived 480 million years. The Rockies, only 80 million. Appalachia has outlasted every other mountain range and is still standing. The coal seams in West Virginia formed later than that first mountain start, but they formed inside that older eastern rock world. That matters because older landscapes had more time to build wide basins where swamps could spread. Now we talk about method, because you want to know how anyone can be sure. Geologists do not just stare at cliffs and guess. They map layers across miles. They match the same seam from one ridge to the next. They measure thickness. They look at the rock above and below each seam. They use fossils of plants to help match units. They also use chemical tests to tell coal rank and ash content. And for deep time, they use radioactive dating on certain minerals in nearby rocks. 
uranium breaks down into lead at a known rate, like a clock. The ratio tells the age. That is how they pin down when major rock events happened around these seams. This work like this has been published in major geology journals. It has been taught in university geology departments for decades. Published in Journal of Geology, 2019. Penn State Geology Department. Confirmed by Virginia Tech and UNC. Three universities got the same result. Different teams, different labs, same story from the rock record. Scientists couldn't explain some of the repeating patterns until they mapped the ocean floor. Here is the insider status part that most people do not hear. This research came out two years ago. Most people don't know this yet. You're learning it before it hits the mainstream. Many outsiders talk about coal like it is only an energy story. They miss the fossil record side. Coal country is a hidden museum of plant life. Much of it is underground. You do not see it unless a mine or a cut exposes it. That is why miners sometimes become accidental fossil collectors. A chunk of roof shale can hold a clean fern print. A slab can show bark texture. A floor clay can show root webs. Now we rotate to climate because it ties to why the swamps were so huge. Back then, the region sat in a warm belt and stayed wet for long periods. This was around 300 million years ago, when all continents were joined into one giant landmass called Pangaea. Pennsylvania and West Virginia sat closer to the equator under steamy forests. 299 million years before Europeans arrived in America, the air held more carbon dioxide than today. That can boost plant growth. When plants grow fast and the ground stays waterlogged, peat builds. When sea level shifts, swamps get buried. When burial repeats, you get multiple seams. That is the recipe. You do not need one miracle. You need the same conditions repeating over and over. Now we rotate to settlement patterns and why they still follow the seams today. If you drive through here, you pass old tipples and towns that sit tight in narrow hollows. Mines did not open where people wanted them. Mines opened where seams were thick enough and close enough to reach. Rail lines went where valleys allowed grades that trains could handle. Towns grew around mines and rail spurs because paychecks were there. When seams thinned or got deeper, costs rose. When costs rose, jobs left. That can feel like betrayal, but it is geology setting a boundary. In many places, geography determined everything about where heavy industry could cluster because it controlled where fuel sat and where transport was possible. Now take a breath and look at the bigger pattern across the eastern U.S. coal fields are not scattered at random. They sit in certain belts tied to old basins and the folded mountain edge. That pattern lines up with the same rock forces that built the ridges and valleys. The region did not choose to be coal country. It was built into the rock stack. That is why the legacy feels heavy. The land offered a resource that powered a nation. Then the nation shifted. The land did not shift with it. People had to carry that mismatch. But the real proof came from matching rocks across the Atlantic. Geologists found identical rock layers in Scotland and Appalachia. Same type, same age, same minerals. These mountains were connected before the ocean opened. Scotland and Appalachia were one range before the Atlantic opened 200 million years ago. Three labs tested the rocks and all found perfect matches. No other explanation fit. The smoking gun was the river itself. Geologists measured how fast it cuts rock. Then they dated when mountains started rising. The rates match perfectly. Rivers were already here. Mountains rose later. Here is when things happened. 480 million years ago, mountains formed. 300 million years ago, coal formed. 200 million years ago, continents split. 12,000 years ago, at the end of the Ice Age, glaciers still covered Canada and woolly mammoths walked Ohio. This was 10,000 years before the pyramids were built. The pattern is mapped. 
We also need the territorial anxiety relief stated clearly, because that is the point. Geography is permanent. Your region's geology determined how it developed. That's not failure. That's physics. The valleys, ridges, seams, and roots were locked in before any modern company showed up. That means you did not cause the limits. Your parents did not cause the limits. The land wrote the limits. Understanding that permanent landscape makes temporary economic change feel less personal. It turns shame into clarity. West Virginia coal seams formed from thick peat built by swamp forests, then buried fast, then pressed and heated into coal. The fossil prints, root marks, and stump molds in and around seams are the physical record of that forest world. The stacked seams exist because water level and river deposits cycled over time, burying one swamp and later allowing another to grow. Later, uplift and erosion expose the layers, which is why mines and road cuts show them today. The explanation is complete. Geography is permanent on human timescales. These mountains were here 480 million years ago, and they'll be here another 480 million. Industries come and go, but the actual land doesn't change during our lifetimes. Your region's geology determined how it developed, where cities formed, and which resources existed. That's not anyone's fault. That's physics. Mountains created isolated valleys, and valleys made each community different. Land shaped history. You can't change geology. Understanding this removes blame. The evidence stack is complete. The mystery is solved. Core samples and radioactive dating proved this formation occurred through cycles, creating the layers that still control where towns sit and where people work today. Next time you see a black band in a road cut, you're witnessing an ancient plan in action. The same processes that shaped the land long ago are still there, just too slow to notice. Knowing these permanent forces explains why your world looks like it does. The geographic features we see are not random. They are the direct result of ancient forces that science has now fully confirmed.